This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. Or if you're in Canada like me, you can use the same promo code at Multizone to get 10% off your orders of singles. If cards aren't what you're looking for, Original Magic Art has playmats, tokens, and sweet art that you can use that same promo code to help you get 5% off your order there. If you're looking to bling out your cards, using Alter Sleeves is a great way to do so, and you can click the affiliate link in my About section to help out the channel as you make an order. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic goblin gang. Hey gang and welcome back. In today's game, I'm playing Tristani, keeping Rootborn Defenses, Greater Good, Angel Finality, Grapple with the Past, Forest, and Beast Within. Matthew is back with his Ravos and Sakashima deck, keeping three islands, Path to Exile, Swiftfoot Boots, Grand Arbiter Augustine IV, and Tundra. Brandon is playing Kamal, Fist of Krosa, and keeps Avenger of Zendikar, Kadama's Reach, Heroic Intervention, Lanawar Elves, and Three Forests. Kyoji is still playing Zur, keeping a Windcaller Raven, Razaketh's Rites, Godless Shrine, Lonely Sandbar, Ash Barons, Architects of Will, and a Lurching Rock Beast. Kyoji wins the die roll and starts us off. Kyoji plays a Godless Shrine, taking two to have it come in untapped. I play a Forest and cast Arbor Elf. Matthew plays a Tundra. Brandon plays a Forest and casts Lanawar Elves. At the end of Brandon's turn, Kyoji cycles Ash Barons to go and find an island, putting it to hand. Kyoji's turn has him drawing and being a bit frustrated with Tomer for having a weird mana base. Kyoji then plays an island, passing to me. I play Sunpetal Grove and pass. Matthew plays a Swamp, and he pays two for Baleful Strix, drawing as it enters. Brandon plays a Forest and casts three visits. He searches for a Dryad Arbor and puts it into play. While Brandon is searching, I cast Grapple with the Past, Million Song of the World Soul, Farhaven Elf, and Loaming Shaman. I return to hand Farhaven Elf. Kyoji also cycles a Lonely Sandbar and a Lurching Rock Beast, drawing each time, and then moves to his turn. Kyoji plays in a Hollowed Fountain, taking another 2 and dropping a 36 as it comes in untapped, and just passes turn. Using my Arbor Elf, I'm able to cast a Farhaven Elf, who comes in and gets to go and find me a Tap Plains to put to field. Matthew plays an island and casts Chasm Skulker, passing. Brandon plays a forest and taps two and the Lanawar Elves to cast Kadama's Reach. He puts a forest into play tapped and puts one to hand. At the end of turn, Kyoji cycles Architects of Will, Razaketh's Rites, and Windcaller Aven, drawing each time. On Kyoji's turn, he plays a Hall of Heliod's Generosity and casts Zur the Enchanter. I untap and unfortunately don't have a land to play. I cast Angel of Finality, exiling Kyoji's graveyard, and pass to Matthew. Matthew draws, triggering the Chasm Skulker and placing a plus one plus one counter onto it. He plays a Glacial Fortress, taps two mana for Swiftfoot Boots, and passes. Brandon plays a Forest, tapping three for a Courser of Crufix. He reveals Drown Your Temple off the top, and passes to Kyoji. Kyoji untaps and moves to combat. He declares attacks on Brandon, and on the attack trigger, Zur allows Kyoji to go into his library to find an enchantment with a mana value of 3 or less. He puts into play the actual commander of the deck, Astral Slide. Brandon then takes 1, and on Kyoji's second main phase, he casts a Fluctuator and passes. I untap, and during my main phase, cast Beast Within targeting Astral Slide. In response, Kyoji cycles Lingering Mirage, using the slide trigger to flicker his Zur. He then holds priority, cycling Irrigated Farmland, and uses the Astral Slide trigger to flicker Matthew's Chasm Skulker, and then cycles a Remote Isle to flicker Brandon's Courser of Crufix. He has one more cycle up his sleeve, using Neutralize to flicker Arbor Elf. After the stack then resolves, Beast Within resolves, and the Astral Slide is destroyed, making Kyoji a 3-3 beast. I then move to combat, swinging the Angel of Finality at Brandon for 3, because politics carry over. 
At the end of turn, all creatures exile with Astral Slide return to the battlefield. Matthew untaps and draws, remembering to place a plus one plus one counter onto his Chasm Skulker later in the turn, and he plays an island. He taps four for a Grand Arbiter Augustine the Fourth, and attempts to equip the Swiftfoot Boots onto him. Kyoji cycles a Nimble Instructionist with the Equip Trigger on the stack, countering the Equip Trigger, and Matthew passes to Brandon. Brandon draws, and reveals Emergence Zone off the top of his library. He plays the Drownyard Temple revealed earlier, gaining one life from the Courser of Crufix. He taps 7 mana, and casts an Avenger of Zendikar, putting 7 plant tokens into play. He passes to Kyoji, who cycles a Fetid Pools at the end of Brandon's turn. Kyoji untaps, and plays a Plains. He moves to combat, and attacks me for destroying the Astral Slide, with Zur. With Zur attacking, he gets to go into his library, and goes to find an answer for Matthew's Grand Arbiter Augustine IV, finding an Oubliette to phase him out. He then moves to his second main phase, and casts a Talisman of Dominance, passing turn. I untap and draw. I cast a Greater Good, and pass. Matthew draws, putting another counter onto his Chasm Skulker. He plays an island for turn, and taps 3 to cast Varagoth, Blood Sky Sire. He taps 1 to equip the Swiftfoot Boots onto Varagoth, and then passes to his husband. Brandon draws, revealing a forest off the top of his library. He plays an Immersion Zone as his land for turn, putting a plus 1 plus 1 counter onto all of his plant tokens and gaining 1 life from the Courser. He then casts Kamal, Fist of Krosa. He passes the turn to Kyoji, who at the end of turn, activates the Hall of Heliod's Generosity to put his commander, I mean Astral Slide, back on top. Kyoji draws and plays a Field of Ruin as his land for turn, and then recasts the slide. Moving to combat, Zur goes at Brandon, tutoring for an idol on the rhetoric. Brandon declares no blocks and takes the one, and Kyoji passes to me. I sacrifice the Angel of Finality to draw three and discard three to greater good. I play a Plains for turn, and then cast Sun Titan. As Sun Titan enters, it brings back the Altar of Dementia, and I pass to Matthew. Matthew draws, putting another counter onto his Chasm Skulker. He plays an Island for turn, and casts Mimic Fat. Moving to combat, he attacks Kyoji with the Baragoth. Kyoji declares no blocks, and Matthew pays the two to activate the boast ability, and tutors for a card onto the top of his library, and then passes turn. Brandon untaps, drawing the forest, and revealing another forest off the top. He plays a forest for turn, and puts another counter onto his plants, and gains one life. He contemplates the mortality of his opponents, before activating Kamal to give his team plus three plus three and trample until the end of turn. He turns the plants and the Avenger Zendikar towards Kyoji, and Kyoji taps out to cast Settle the Wreckage. This has all eight of his attackers getting exiled, as Brandon searches his library for eight forests and puts them into play, also gaining eight life. He then reveals off the top of his library because the course was still around, and we see a Sylvan library on the top, and he passes to Kyoji. Kyoji plays an island for turn, and casts Fell the Mighty, targeting Xur to destroy all creatures with power two or greater. In response, I sacrifice Sun Titan to greater good, drawing six and discarding three. Brandon also gets in on this, using Heroic Intervention to save his creatures, while Matthew's Virogoth and Chasm Skulker die, with the Skulker making three 1-1 one -one squids, and Matthew puts Varagoth under the bat. Kyoji then goes to combat, and attacks Brandon with Xur. He searches for a prison in the moon, enchanting Kamal with it. He's able to do so despite the fact that Kamal is hexproof, since all aura spells are always targeted, and if the aura were to enter the battlefield under other means, such as with Xur, the player who controls the aura is allowed to choose rather than target what the aura is enchanting, thus getting around hexproof. I draw, and cast Nature's Lore, going to find a Temple Garden, having it come into play untapped and taking two. I then pass to Matthew. Matthew untaps and draws. He pays three to activate Mimic Fat, putting a Varagoth token into play. He moves to combat and attacks Kyoji with it, and before damage, Matthew pays the two to search his library for a card to put on top, thanks to Boast. Kyoji then takes the two, and Matthew passes. At the end of turn, I cast Sundering Growth to destroy the Imprisoned in the Moon, and in response, and in response, Kyoji activates Field of Ruin to destroy Kamal, who is still technically a land thanks to the aura. This has each player searching their libraries for a basic and putting them into play, with Brandon gaining one from the force coming into play instead of his commander. Brandon untaps and draws. 
He asks for life totals, and it's no surprise that Kyoji's getting beaten up on because of all the shenanigans he's pulling. He casts a Sylvan Awakening, animating all of his lands. He then attacks Kyoji with all 14 lands. Kyoji declares the idol on his blocker, and flickers out Brandon's Drown Your Temple by cycling Archfiend of Ifnir. Kyoji then takes 28, dropping a 4, and Brandon passes. Kyoji untaps and draws, casting a Karmic Guide in his main phase. He returns the Archfiend of Ifnir to the battlefield, and moves to combat. He attacks Brandon and gets to search for all that glitters, with Zer getting plus 6 plus 6 from the enchantment, and then hitting Brandon for 7. He then passes turn, and at the end of turn, I use Path to Exile to target the Eidolon and the Rhetoric. In response, Kyoji cycles Astral Drift, flickering the Eidolon, as well as the Karmic Guide, which will both return at the end of my turn. The cycling triggers the Archfiend of Ifnir, putting a minus one minus one counter onto all creatures Kyoji does not control. In response to that trigger, I sacrifice my two creatures remaining to mill myself for two. I play a Flagstones of Trocare, and tap out to cast a Green Sun Zenith where X is 8. I put out a Woodfall Primus, targeting the slide. I then sacrifice it to greater good before it resolves, drawing 6 and discarding 3. It comes back because of the Persist trigger, and I target the Fluctuator. I then pass to Matthew, and at the end of turn, Kyoji has both of his creatures returning to the battlefield from the slide trigger, and the Karmic Guide returns Nimble Obstructionist to the battlefield. Matthew casts Path to Exile during his main phase and targets the Idol on the Rhetoric, which finally resolves and gets exiled. This has Kyoji searching for an island and putting it into play tapped. Matthew then follows up with a not overloaded Cyclonic Rift, targeting the Oubliette and having Grand Arbiter Augustin IV come back into play. He then casts one of his commanders, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, and has it come in as a copy of the Grand Arbiter. He then casts Clone, having the clone come in as a copy of Sakashima, who is a copy of the Grand Arbiter. This means that all of Matthew's opponent's spells cost 3 more, and his cost 3 less. He then passes to Brandon. Brandon draws, and plays a force off the top of his library, gaining 1. He reveals a Sylvan library off the top yet again, and then casts a Yeva, passing turn. Kyoji has an Echo Trigger on the Karmic Guide during his upkeep, which he chooses not to pay. He then moves to his main phase, and then to combat, swinging Xur at Brandon, and triggering Xur's on attack ability to put out Astrid's Invocation into play. It copies all that glitters, also enchanting onto Xur. Before blockers are declared, Brandon casts Scrib Rangers, which has Flying and Protection from Blue. Priority then moves back to Kyoji as he cycles a Chroma's Vengeance and triggers the Archfiend to put a minus one minus one counter onto all of his opponent's creatures, and this puts an end to the Scrib Rangers before it can block. In response, I sacrifice my Woodfall Primus to greater good again, drawing 5 and discarding 3. Brandon also activates Scrib Ranger's ability, returning a forest to his hand, and Xur then gets through unblocked, hitting Brandon for 7 more commander damage. During Kyoji's second main phase, he then cycles Vizier of Tumbling Sand, putting an additional minus 1 minus 1 counter onto all of his opponent's creatures, and then cycles Cast Out, putting another counter onto all of his creatures, which kills all of the Grand Arbiter Augustin IV clones and the Corsair of Crufix. He then casts Talisman of Progress and passes to me. I cast Tristani, Selesnya's voice in my main phase, and follow up with the All-Star of the deck, Uvenwald Hydra. It comes in and gains me 10, and I search for a Mirror Pool with the Hydra's ability and put it into play tapped. Matthew casts Ravos Soul Tender during his main phase and then pays 3 for Commander Sphere, which he taps to equip Ravos with the Swiftfoot Boots, and pass to Brandon. Brandon plays a Forest, and then pays 2 for a Sylvan Library. He recasts Kamal, and passes to Kyoji. At the end of turn, Kyoji activates the Hall of Heliod's Generosity to put the slide back on top. Kyoji draws the Astral Slide, casting in his main phase. He follows up with Sundial of the Infinite, and moves to combat. He attacks Brandon with Xur, but fails to find. Brandon is unable to stop the damage, unfortunately, and takes lethal commander damage from Xur, getting knocked out of the game. In his second main phase, Kyoji casts Arcanomancer, and returns Settled the Wreckage to his hand. I untap and draw. I cast Aetherflux Reservoir to the dismay of the table, 
and gain two afterwards by casting Reclamation Sage, and then one more from Tristani as it enters. With the Reclamation Sage hitting the field, I blow up Astral Slide yet again. I then cast an Elvish Mystic, gaining three, followed by the Wood Elves, gaining four, and go to search for a forest. I then play a land for turn, and pass, not realizing I should have gained life from the 1-1's one entering because I'm talking too much. During Matthew's upkeep, he returns Grand Arbiter Augustine IV to hand thanks to the Ravos trigger. He floats a blue with Commander Sphere, and then sacrifices it to draw a card. He then activates the Mimic Fat, putting a token copy of Varagoth into play, and swings it at me. He activates the Boast ability, and goes to find a card to put on top. Moving to blocks, I stop it with Wood Elves. Matthew then passes, and I blast Kyoji in the face with the Aetherflux Reservoir to take him out. I untap, and cast a Green Sun Zenith where X is 8 again. I find a Nyx Bloom Ancient, gaining 1 from the Reservoir, and then 5 from Tristani for it coming into play. I then sacrifice a Mirror Pool to make a token copy of the Ulvenwald Hydra, and search for a land, and then gain 13. I then activate Tristani to populate the token of the Ulvenwald Hydra, going to find another land and gaining 14 this time, with Crows and Verge hitting the field. Matthew casts Supreme Verdict on his main phase, and in response to the spell, I mill Matthew for 52 using the Altar of Dementia and sacrificing all of my creatures. Matthew then follows up with a Clever Impersonator, copying the Aetherflux Reservoir as a last act of desperation. My turn has me casting Eternal Witness, which returns Sun Titan in my hand. I then recast Tristani, gaining 3 total life that turn so far from the Aetherflux Reservoir, and follow up with a Rampant Growth and Kadama's Reach, bringing me to 51 life. This is enough to let me blast Matthew out of the game, and I'm the victor. Game review time. So I got very lucky this game, because I think we were very, very, very close to being locked out with the Sundial of the Infinite and Astral Slide on Kyoji's side of the board. As always, Uvenwald Hydra was an MVP for this game, and it's continuing to prove to be one of my favorite green cards ever. It was also nice to see more of Matthew's deck, and frankly, having three Grand Arbiter Augustine IV on one side of the board is disgusting, and he's a monster. I was actually kind of rooting for Brandon to win again, especially when he used Sylvan Awakening to make all of his lands that Kyoji had just given him into creatures, and almost killed Kyoji with them. Other than that, as we saw, even with a budget, Cycling Zero is very powerful, and it seems to be almost too easy for him to establish a lock, since you get to tutor for one of the key pieces with your commander. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you have